uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays helping with virtual learning and discipleship. It's a really powerful uh, time of faith formation for these young people and many volunteers are giving themselves and we welcome more and we thank you for that. Um, I saw a video of a couple of my staff members playing on the job. Um, what was that about? Kickball. So we had an awesome kickball game for our middle schoolers this past Wednesday at 2 o'clock at Swenson Park. We're going to start hosting those every other week. So no kickball this week, but look forward to next week. Uh, we had about 35 middle schoolers come out and play. It was awesome. If you awesome. haven't seen that video, do go see it. <laughs> No a, staff members were harmed no in the making of this film. No staff members were harmed in the making of that, <laughs> uh, that video. Good. Um, we also continue with our Vespers by the Water. Every other Thursday night, we're having a 30-minute outdoor worship time uh, in different communities around Moorhead and beyond uh, to, to welcome people to come and worship outside, fresh air, by the water. Uh, last week, you hosted it at the water behind your house. It was wonderful. Chloe and Tyler, who are both yeah. here this morning, danced for us. Maddie sang. It was a beautiful evening. And then twice this month, we'll be doing it. So be watching your push notifications, uh, not this Thursday, but the next, and then two weeks after that. Those are important opportunities. We're also starting to plan something uh, at the very end of the month. Yes, Trunk or Treat. Um, it's a, a ministry both to our church and our community to provide a safe Halloween trick-or-treating experience here in our parking lot. Our plans this year are a little bit different. Um, we're still yeah. hosting our family-friendly event. We're just going to make sure we create a one-way traffic flow through our parking lot. We'll mm -hmm. stagger entries so that we don't have whole mass groups running through the parking lot at the same time. We'll space the cars out. We're going to provide everybody who signs up to do a trunk one of our tables so you can place the table in between your person and the kids receiving candy just to make sure we're staying a proper amount of That's distance right. away from each other. So be looking for more information on how to get involved with that event because it does take a lot of people to put it on. And the most important thing is there will be candy. So much candy. So much candy. So much um, candy. Also, uh, Waylon Bell and, uh, and Sarah are... Uh, hosting uh, middle school and high school on Sunday nights, uh, right here, 6.30, 6.30 to 7.30. Tonight is a Luigi's Pizza night. Ooh, okay, so uh, all middle school and high school, um, our younger kids are in Sunday school now, adult classes are meeting now, if that's something you're interested in. So there are a lot of opportunities to connect and engage and get involved, uh, and the way to stay very, very current is use that app on your phone and allow push notifications to get in there so that we can keep you in the loop. Anything else? I think that's all. I think we're ready. Let's prepare our hearts to worship Almighty God. Let's rise and sing. When darkness tries to roll over my bones, when sorrow comes to steal the joy I owe When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand the chance When I stand in your love doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Shame no longer has a place to hide. And I am not captive to the light I'm not afraid to leave my past behind I won't be shaken I won't be shaken, no 
Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love Somebody say amen Oh, there's power that can make up every day. There's power that can empty out the grave. There's resurrection power that can say the power in your name. Power in your name. And my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Standing in your love. Amen. You guys can be seated. Ava, thank you for uh, worshiping God and clapping your hands with me. I appreciate that. That was excellent. Sorry, give me a second with this microphone. Our scripture, uh, our first lesson this morning comes from the gospel according uh, to John, the 13th chapter. It was just before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water in a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you'll understand. No, said Peter, you you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him. And that's why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now in response to the word, I invite you to stand. The Apostles' Creed is a historic affirmation of faith that Christians for centuries have used to declare our unity and faith in Christ. And so I invite you now uh, to affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We are truly a people of prayer. We lift up prayer for a number of reasons. I believe one of the most important reasons is to express gratitude and celebration for the many amazing things that God is doing in our midst. Um, I, I want to point out something up here this morning for which my heart rejoices. We have, from the midst of this congregation, young people that have been almost born and reared right here. We've got a college graduate. We've got a middle school, and we've got a high school student back here on our, in our worship team. Isn't that awesome? Praise God for that. And you're just a little bit older than that, Jason. Yes, yes. We also want to rejoice. There were three of our church members who were in Washington, D.C. yesterday, praying with thousands for our country. And uh, we need to pray uh, and pray and, and pray. Are there other prayers of either thanksgiving or gratitude or intercession that you would like to offer this day? I do know that this week, Pastor Patrick ministered unto the Glover family. Bill Glover was 98 years old, one of our oldest members. And as he's in heaven now, we pray for Louise, his wife, and for that extended family. We also this morning received a phone call from Lauren Wells, uh, daughter-in-law to Mac and um, to the Wells family. And um, Sharon, thank you. And um, her daddy died this morning because of COVID up in Biden. And the hardest part for them was that they could not be by his side, but were separated by a glass wall and a distance. So our prayer is that the Holy Spirit communicated to him that they were right there in love and prayer for him to the very, very end. So we pray. Other prayers that you'd like to offer. Waylon, anything that's come in from uh, the Facebook? Thank you so much. For Louise Outlaw, Louise is 94. Um, Louise is in the last season of her life here, and her children, Luann, uh, Tom, and David are surrounding her in a lot of loving care during these days. And so we pray for Louise. Any others? Okay, Sarah. Thank you. For Tina Epps' mother, Marlene Kelly, uh, Marlene had a heart procedure. That came out okay. She is still struggling with her lungs, and so we pray. Doris Murphy, uh, 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 Donna, for your mother, we lift her in prayer. And for Spence, we'll be having a procedure this week at Vida. We pray for Spence. Yes, please, Raven. Oh my goodness, Chuck Hartzell, quadruple bypass. Is he out or still in the hospital? Okay. My goodness. Oh, drives himself to the hospital. Well, praise God that he got there and has had that surgery. We pray for his healing. Please, yes. For that deputy and his family, we pray. Philip Willis. Other prayers that you would have this day? Please. Okay. Mercy. Eva, we will pray for him to be hit um, in that, with that head injury. We pray for his recovery and glad he could be quickly airlifted to Wilmington. Yes, Waylon? Okay. So the Pilgrimage House Band, you'll be reading in your next newsletter and through the app that Pilgrimage is a youth uh, weekend that's phenomenal. Um, differently done this year, but we have a house band where kids are singing and playing. Uh, one of our own, Caitlin Starling, will be in there this year, and we rejoice, and as well as some dancers, I think, right? Yeah. So this is going to be an exciting year. Thank you for that, Waylon. 
We continue to pray for our servicemen and women. Uh, we pray for first responders, our health care uh, workers in every setting um, uh, through all of these days. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we come before you, for you hear our prayers and invite us to speak aloud in faith. Not because we're telling you things you don't know. We're trying to convince you to do anything other than what your own nature does. But so that we can connect with you and agree with you and unite with you in your love and care for all your people and the whole of creation. We pray especially for those that are grieving either because of death or in anticipation. Comfort them and strengthen them. We rejoice in the faith that was lived and is lived by these uh, wonderful people. We pray as well for those that are sick, those in the hospital or in uh, care facilities, uh, the isolation, that they would still know that they are surrounded by love, uh, by care, and certainly, Lord, by you. And we pray for your church. Uh, everywhere, but especially here, that we might be attentive to the Holy Spirit, that we might focus ourselves um, uh, according to your mission, to glorify you, to make disciples, and to share your compassion in this world. We pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, kids who are worshiping here, we invite you to stay in your seats. Uh, we can't have you come up front just yet. We miss you guys being able to all crowd around on stage with us. Kids who are watching at home, gather super close to the TV. I have something super important to talk to you about. So we're still talking about the armor of God and what it means to put on all the different pieces. And today, Pastor Patrick is going to talk about shoes. So I wore my absolute favorite pair of shoes. Um, I love them. When I have the body pack, I can just stick it down in there because I never have a pocket. They're so convenient. They keep your feet safe and protected from anything on the ground that might come up and try to get at your toes. Shoes are so super important. But what Pastor Patrick is going to talk about is shoes as a part of the armor of God. And he's going to teach us that we should have feet that are ready to go and preach the gospel of Christ. Do you guys ever think you're too little to do stuff? Ava, you know what Jackson likes to say all the time? Whenever Bradley's trying to do something that he can't do, Jackson's such an encourager. Jackson will go, you can do it, Bradley. Or if Jackson's trying to do something himself because he wants to be able to do everything himself. He never thinks he's too little to do anything, no matter what it is. He'll tell himself, Jackson, you can do it. You can do it, Jackson. He's such an encourager. He's always ready. He never thinks he's too little. Guys, what I want you to remember as you listen to Pastor Patrick talk about sharing the gospel is that you're not too little either. Just like Jackson says, you can do it. All of us, even the youngest of us, there are ways that we can share our love for Jesus. Maybe it's offering to pray with a friend when they're sad, or, or maybe it's even something as simple as praying for your food and giving God thanks even when you're out in public. There's always something that you can do to share God's love. Let's pray together. Gracious God, thank you so much for these children and for all the children. Thank you for the ways you write your love onto our hearts so that we are prepared and ready to share it with others. Don't let us look down on ourselves because we're young, but instead, let all of us be examples for all of the believers. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Friends, we come to a time in our service where you know we're not passing the plates around. Um, I know that many of you do still have your smartphone in your hand, so if you wanted to give right now um, as a part of our worship life together, you're welcome to pull that out. You can give on our app. You can give on the church website. We also do still have a basket available in the back. Y'all, it is part of our worship life together to give back to God, God's tithes, and our offerings. So as the band plays, let us all in our own way offer up the fullness of who we are to God. Amen. Amen. I have to brag a little bit, if I may. So you heard what he said. My, my young loves back here are awesome. I'm a hard guy to play with. This morning at 7.30, Car, uh, Katie called me. She was sick and said she couldn't make it. So half of our songs were gone. So this morning these guys are playing something we never practiced. And I just praise the Lord we've got these guys with talent and courage that they have. So, uh, amen. Um, the day between us, how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation. I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy, what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his soul. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Hallelujah. Set me free, hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body, it began to breathe. 
out of the silence the roaring lion declared that great has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me cause Jesus yours is a victory stand and sing this morning hallelujah hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my Amen. Standing on this mountain top looking just how far we've come knowing that for every step you were with us kneeling on this battleground seeing just how much you've done knowing every victory was your power in us scars and struggles on the way but with joy our hearts can say our hearts can say never once did we ever walk alone never once did you leave us on our own you are faithful God, you are faithful. Kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done, knowing every victory is your power in us. Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can sing. Yes, our hearts can say, sing it. Never once did he ever walk alone. Never once did you leave us on our own. You are faithful, God, you are faithful, yes. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, never once, no, 
We have to walk alone Carried by your constant grace Held within your perfect peace We never walked slow We never walked alone Never once did we ever walk alone and never once did you leave us on our own You are faithful, God, you are faithful Every step we are breathing in your grace Forevermore we'll be breathing out your praise you are faithful, God, you are faithful. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. Amen. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Welcome. We're so glad you're here this morning. In the 1994 Academy Award winning movie, Forrest Gump, there are several scenes in which Forrest is sitting on a park bench with a nurse. As they were having conversation, he noticed her shoes, how comfortable they looked. After admiring his shoes, he said, my mama always said you can tell a lot about a person because of their shoes. We continue this day on the preaching series, The Armor of God. Let us hear the scriptures. Ephesians 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And have you done everything? to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth, buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted to be ready that comes with the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, it is in the pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in the dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. As Pastor Sarah said, shoes are important. We wear shoes to dress and impress. We wear shoes at home, our house shoes. We take on waders to go fishing. 
fins that help us swim faster. In the winter, we put on snow skis so we'll have lots of fun. Flip-flops for the beach, boots for hiking, different types of football shoes and soccer shoes and maybe kickball shoes on that. Shoes for children and shoes for adults. And Rachel, our organist, wears special shoes that she begins to play the organ. Shoes help us to be the best that we're able to be and helps us to succeed in every activity. For the armor of God, the soldiers wore shoes. They were thick leather shoes, and they had hop nails that were spiked from their soles down to the ground. So in the wilderness, where they fought the battles, they could stand firm within the faith. But they could stand firm in the ground because the last thing a soldier wanted to do was to be knocked down. He had to be firm and strong in all that they did. The scriptures tell us that we need to stand firm in the faith because there's many things in life that knocks us down emotionally, physically, and spiritually. These two past two years, we've experienced many struggles and difficulties. Between Hurricane Florence and the coronavirus, our homes and lives have been shattered, businesses closed, and loss of jobs. Schools and churches have been closed. No visitors in hospitals and assisted living facilities. The fear of becoming ill or maybe becoming sick ourselves or seeing a loved one die. Wearing masks and social distancing, loneliness and depression, financial struggles, drug abuse and suicides, sleepless nights and overeating, on TV, we've seen warnings of possible new hurricanes, politics, 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 riots, and the burning of cities. That's the devil's scheme, worry, fear, and the struggle in life difficulties. The devil wants us to question life, question ourselves, even to question God and our faith in Jesus Christ. The devil wants us to separate us from relationships with family, friends, church and Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We think peace, the opposite of this chaos, is spending a Sunday afternoon at the beach or the family turning off the TV and cell phones. That is a really good idea. A group of friends going to play a round of golf. A mother of young children enjoying a day for self-care. A doctor calling saying that the cancer that you had was benign the absence of war and chaos. All of these are amazingly important, but that's not biblical peace. Biblical peace is seeing the rainbow in the midst of a storm, not afterwards. It's a 2 a.m. in the morning in which a young mother is rocking her screaming baby. She's tired and worn out, but she's praising God for the new life that she has there. Or maybe a parent of a teenager that stays up half the night waiting for their son or daughter to come home. And instead of being upset, they're rejoicing of what a fine young person that they have. It's been told that you have a life-threatening illness. And every day that you kneel before God, that you bow before God and you pray, giving thanks for a life well lived and the opportunities of preparing yourself for the coming of heaven. Biblical peace is in every life situation. You have the peace of God within your heart, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Deuteronomy 31, it's knowing and believing the Lord himself goes before us. He will never leave you or forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Jesus gives us peace. In the Gospel of John, in this world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The Hebrew word for peace is shalom, completeness, wholeness, the inner peace of our soul, 
oneness with God and with one another. That's the peace that God wants us to have. In 1736, John and Charles Wesley took an English boat from London to Georgia here in the New World. There was a ferocious thunderstorm that shredded the main sails and flooded the decks of the ship. Many of the British passengers screamed in terror and fear. However, a group of Moravian missionaries sang throughout the entire storm, not afraid of life, not afraid of death, not afraid of the fear that the others were taking part of. The Wesleys knew that the Moravians had something in their life that was different than what they had, something that was deeper and more meaningful the absolute peace of God, that assurance of knowing Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Romans 8, For I'm convinced that nothing in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's that assurance. It's knowing that Jesus is with us every moment of every day and every struggle in life, that God is there. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or whether we die, we're with the Lord. We're in the palm of the Lord's hands every moment. How we, do we receive this peace that stands firm? We first must bow. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I lift my eyes unto the hills. Where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. It's reading and studying God's holy word, the Bible. The Bible is the word of God, and it's not just a book that we read. These words become the foundation of our life. It's who we are as a people of faith. I have four precious, precious grandchildren, ages five, four, three, and one. Mama's busy. Grandma's busy, too. Nana's busy. One of the things they love to do is go into the closet and they put on daddy's shoes. And laughing and giggling, they come out into the main room wearing daddy's shoes. And I says, I'm just like daddy. I'm just like daddy. That's what we need to do. We need to be imitators of our God as he loved and cared for each one of us. To have peace that stands firm, we must be more like the Heavenly Father. We must be one with God. We are beloved daughters and sons of the living Lord, Romans 8 says. We are the children of God. When we cry, Abba, Father, Abba, Daddy, it's God's Spirit bringing witness with our spirit. The importance of prayer, daily conversations with God, putting his word within our heart that transforms us in a new creation. Before we can stand firm, we must bow before our Lord. Before we can stand firm, we must bow knowing that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior in all that we say and do. In the Gospel of Matthew, these first chapters, it talks about Jesus and and the beginnings of his ministry. But notice the love of Christ and the spirit of the evil forces. We read first in Matthew 3 that the Spirit of the Lord was upon Jesus. Jesus was being baptized and praying, and the heavens opened up with the Holy Spirit descending upon him like a dove. A voice came down from heaven saying, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Have you experienced that and felt like that? God's saying that to us each and every day. You are my daughter or my son, my beloved. And with you, I am well pleased. God is with us. God loves us. God created us and wants that relationship with us. But in the very next verse in Matthew, Jesus goes to the wilderness where he spends 40 days and 40 nights as the evil one tempts Jesus. The devil asked Jesus three different questions, and these are Jesus' answers. Man does not live by bread alone, because you and I both know that Jesus is 
the bread of life. The devil asked another question in Jesus' response. The worship the Lord our God and serve only him. Today, in all the chaos of the world, we have to stay focused on the living Christ. And the third response, to not put the Lord God to the test. How often do we do that, unfortunately? That the evil spirits out there that tempts us, that keeps our eyes away from God but onto other things. In Luke's gospel, Jesus immediately goes from the temptations, those 40 nights and 40 days, to Galilee, and then on to Nazareth. He was in a synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he was given the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, and it was turned to this passage. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. We have feet readiness for peace. We have feet ready to bring the good news to the poor, to all people who are in need of knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Did you see that through the scriptures? God's baptism of Jesus through the Holy Spirit, the temptations that we have, the struggles that Jesus had, but he knew and stayed focused on Jesus, and then the ministry that Jesus was offered through the Spirit of the Lord. That's the way it is in our life. Everything is going great, then a temptation, the evil one sneaks in. Luke 15 gives the parable of the prodigal son. You know the story. A man had two sons. And the two sons were there, and they had absolutely everything that they needed. But the younger son allowed the evil one to come and distract him. But there's other cities and faraway places, and there's more fancy living and, and things that he needed to get involved with. So he asked his father for his inheritance. And he went to the faraway city, wild living and carousing and things that he would never have done at home. And he spent all of his money. And there was a great famine in that area, and he needed a job. But the only job that he could find was working, feeding, and tending pigs. Those beautiful sandals that he had on his feet while he was home are now taken off, and he's wallowing in pig's food. For a good Jewish person, that was absolutely the most humbling, most humiliating experience he could possibly have. But it was in the midst of waiting in the pig's food, once so hungry that he wanted to eat it, that he stopped and he prayed before God. And he says, Father, I have sinned you against you, and I've sinned against my father. And he realized that there was a better life once again. That evil nature that took a hold of him, God's Holy Spirit came back into his life, and the son started coming back home. But as parents, we always want the very best for our kids, and so the father kept on watching for his son, hopefully one day to come home, and one day he saw him. As he was walking down the road, and the father went out, loving and embracing his son, and his son bowed before him, asking for forgiveness. Forgiveness from him as his father on earth and forgiveness from his heavenly father. And the father asked for the best robe and a ring for his finger and sandals once again for his feet. There is evil out there in the world that distracts us. Let's reflect on Pastor Powell's reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus knew he was going to be betrayed and abandoned by his disciples. Jesus knew that he was going to be crucified, that those religious leaders of the day would shout, crucify him, crucify him. The evil of the world was piled up upon his shoulders. And as he bowed down a little bit later that evening in the Garden of Gethsemane, he sweated tears of blood knowing that temptation and the evilness of the world that he took upon his shoulders. But that night, as they were celebrating the day of the Passover, during the midst of the meal, he got up and he asked his disciples to get up, and he took his robe off, 
and took a towel in the water basin. And he bent down before them and washed his disciples' feet. Now, why would he wash the disciples' feet? He said that you don't need a bath, and they have their symbolic baths, and so they all had those. But the roads are dirty and dusty. Feet with sandals would become dirty. But even more than that, on those very same roads, there were the sheep and the donkeys and the camels that walked, and they left deposits on the road, smelly, stinky deposits. There were the merchants' carts and wagons that would travel those same roads, and so those piles of deposits were scattered all through the roads. Disciples' feet would not only be dirty, they would be stinky. The dirtiest part of the disciples were their feet. It was usually a servant that would wash the feet of the honored guest for that meal or any other meal when they came into the home. But it was Jesus that bowed down. And he took the water and he took the towel and he washed each one of their feet. They didn't realize what he was doing at that moment. But Jesus continued to love them. Jesus knew that one disciple would betray him, that another disciple would say he didn't know Jesus, would deny him that all would abandon him during the course of that night and the next few days. But Jesus' amazing love and amazing grace. And we know following the Passover meal, Jesus turned that Passover meal into the Lord's Supper. This is my body given for you. This is the blood of the new heaven shed for you and for many. The promises in the midst of evil and struggle and destruction the promises of Jesus for life forever and ever and ever. For Pastor Hal, for Pastor Sarah and I, one of the most meaningful services is that of Holy Week. And we're right here in this area that we have the foot washing service. That you come, you don't have stinky feet, but you come and we bow before you washing your feet. Remember part of that scripture, we wash your feet that you might go and wash others' feet. Because it's in the washing of the feet that we're one in Jesus Christ. That we're one in our Lord and Savior. That it's that peace that, that lives within us and sends us forth that we might become all that God's told us to do. It was interesting about the children. And just a little side story that during the week I have other types of things that I do and I go to people's homes and, and I met a family and, and the family told me that they didn't know Jesus as they were telling me their life story. But it was their two-year-old child that says that at my preschool other people talk about going to church. But I've never been to church. So this two-year-old little girl convinced her mom and dad that she needed to go to the same church that her friends were going. God gifts each and every one of us the word of God for the people of God. On that first Easter Sunday morning, there were two Marys that came to the tomb. It wasn't Easter like you and I know Easter. They were scared and worried, not knowing about the future. The disciples were behind locked doors because they were so scared and afraid. But it was the angel of the Lord that told the two Marys, Be not afraid, come and see, go and tell. And the two Marys turned around to run to go tell the disciples. And they went into the loving arms of Jesus. And in the sanctuary, you'll see that on the stained glass window behind the choir of Mary kneeling before God, bowing before Jesus, that before we can stand firm, we must bow before the Lord. Shoes. Shoes does tell a lot of things about a person. 
Shoes of compassion, shoes of prayer, shoes of love and mercy and peace. Shoes that help us with a listening ear, that enable us to be active peacemakers, to console and to understand, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, but we do not proclaim ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, and ourselves as servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said that light shine out of darkness made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God and the face of Jesus Christ. I like the New Revised Standard Version about the armor of God and this portion of that scripture. As it says, our shoes for your feet put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. What shoes has Jesus given you? What shoes do you wear? Where would you go? What neighbors will you see? Where might you have an experience this coming week that you can proclaim that good news of Jesus Christ? God provides. God gives us the truth through the Holy Scriptures, a personal relationship through prayer. As we live in the Spirit, we become the child of God. And God gives us shoes to share the gospel. Romans 10, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe with your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, you will be saved. How can they believe when they have not heard? How can they heard without someone preaching? How can they preach unless they are sent? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you this day and every day as we bring the good news to others. Let the song be your prayer this morning. I am not who I make, but I am who you would make me to be. I am not what I've done, but I am loved unconditionally. I am not loved by the measure of love that I bring. I am not who I know. I am known by the King of all kings. Jesus, you are enough. Jesus, you are enough for me. With nothing, I still have everything. Jesus, you are enough for me. You are maker made visible, holding the world in your hand. You are patient and merciful, giver of grace without end. And satisfied simply by being who you always been. You are infinite love, and you prove it again and again. Jesus, you are enough. Jesus, you are enough for me. With nothing, I still have everything. Jesus, you are enough.
came to the Passover meal and Jesus bowed down. You gotta bow down before you can stand still. And he washed his disciples' feet. The disciples full of evil, but listening to the teachings of Jesus for three years. There's that mixture of sin and evil, but the love of God in Jesus Christ. Our world's full of chaos these days. But we come because we love Jesus. And Jesus took the water and knelt before them to wash their feet. Jesus, amazing love and grace for each and every one of us. The disciples fully didn't understand that day, but as we read the scriptures, these disciples were sent out, and they went throughout that region into Europe and Africa and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. They had clean feet in readiness and sharing the gospel. May God send you through Jesus Christ to wherever you're intended to go with clean feet and a clean heart that we might share the good news of Jesus Christ and the peace of our Lord and Savior to all people. Amen. Jesus, you are enough. Jesus.